another tough battle for the Boyd Broncos on Friday night. Unfortunately, coming out just a two-point conversion shy of a victory against Plano East, losing by two points. I'm joined now by head coach Don Drake. And coach, a frustrating night indeed for your team. Had a couple of mistakes on offense, a couple of turnovers, and some penalty calls that really affected you in the end of the game. There's no doubt. You know, we fumbled our very first play of the game deep in our own territory after we had stopped them and, and received the punt. Gave them a short field. Um, they were able to score. They went for two and, and went up eight to nothing. <clears throat> you know, we battled back. Um, we actually ended up, you know, converting the two-point conversion to tie. It got brought back because of, of a penalty situation, so we had to kick. Ended up taking the lead, going for two again, just to get up by seven. Made it. You know, unfortunately, gets called back as well for a penalty situation. Um, so it, it, it was like we were battling all night to try and try and get to that uh, get to that win. And unfortunately, we just we weren't able to come out on time. Well, we'll get to the highlights for the game now. You start off with the ball starting to drive into their territory. Driscoll fumbles the ball, and they convert a fourth and 18 on your 36 for a first down that leads to their first score of the game. That has to be a play that you're just thinking, you know, how does that happen? Oh, there's no doubt. It was a huge play in the game. I mean, we had, uh, we had done pretty well defensively to put them in a long yarded situation, uh, even with great, you know, great field position that they had, and, and we weren't able to make the play uh, in the passing game. So, unfortunately, they, they did score and take the lead there, and uh, it was that kind of night for us. I mean, we kept battling, but it seemed like we, we, uh, we could, never, could never get what we needed to come out on top. You get your first score late in the first quarter. A good drive that you sustained. Driscoll had a nice big 30-plus yard run. And then Curtis Ladd, he ran the ball effectively in this game, ended up with 65 yards rushing. He had a 10-yard touchdown run on a third and eight, a critical play. Yeah, I thought Curtis played really well. You know, he threw the ball, I think, for probably the, the biggest night he's had so far statistically. Uh, also rushed the ball very well in the option game. So, you know, I thought he, he played extremely well. Here's a nice run by him for a touchdown to, for our first score, you know, that, that we had. Curtis ended up with 165 yards passing with no turnovers in the game. He has really just every single game gotten better and better. He's really starting to peak his performance late in the season, which is exactly what you want. No doubt, you know, junior quarterback, uh, He's got a lot of starts under his belt now. He's really played well. He's, he's done a really good job with his decision making. There's another example. Nobody's open. He tucks down and runs and turns it into a positive play for us. So I've been really pleased with, with our quarterback play. Driscoll scoring right there. Gave you a 14 to 8 lead early in the second quarter. Your offensive line seems to be if they play well, you're going to win the game. If they have a, a bad game, then that's usually when you're in trouble. They played well tonight, though, in this loss. You know, I thought overall they, they did a pretty good job, you know, up front. I really do. Um, you know, we, we do have to run the football. I mean, that's, that's our mainstay. Um, and I thought we had a pretty decent night on the ground. You know, we ended up rushing for, for over 200 yards that night, and uh, it wasn't bad. You know, unfortunately, the turnovers were a big issue for us. Um, had a couple of third down conversions that were crucial that we weren't able to, uh, to convert, and that ended up being – the difference in the ball game. That and obviously the, the conversions that we made that got called back for penalties. Right, both of those could have really changed the course of this game. And in fact, allows Plano East with a touchdown late in the second quarter. They lead at halftime in the third quarter. You drive down the field. Semenk has a chance to kick a 43-yard field goal, and that's no good. And usually, you know, this year, he's been one of the best field goal kickers around the area, making almost everything that he's kicked just happens to be the worst night to pick to finally miss a field goal. Well, and he, he didn't get a chance to miss it. It got blocked. So okay. uh, that one wasn't, wasn't on him. Uh, they had a guy come off the edge, made a great play, left his feet early, and was able to get his hands on the ball and, and block the attempt. So, um, you know, Jared really never had an opportunity to even, even see if that one was going to go through the uprights or not. But that was, a, that was a big play in the game as well. So Plano East making some plays on special teams. Offense continues to move the ball well. Your defense played particularly well in this game against the run, held them to about 80 yards rushing, and several times on fourth and six and a fourth and goal, when Plano East kept trying to go for it, you're able to get some huge stops. 
Yeah, I thought defensively we kept ourselves in it. Um, you know, we kept battling. You know, I'll say offensively, I mean, we, we kept playing. You know, we kept making plays. It was just one of those nights where you felt like you were fighting uphill the entire, the entire way. You know, even when we took the lead in the second quarter, you know, we're not able to get that lead to seven. It was only to six. And so when they scored again, um, you know, you're down again. So it was just, it was an uphill struggle the entire night. Uh, kept thinking we would catch a break. And, you know, unfortunately, I mean, even in the fourth quarter, when we punted away to them and recovered the, uh, recovered the fumble punt. They threw a penalty flag for a halo infraction on that. And we missed that, oppor you know, we missed that opportunity to get the ball in their territory with, with them having a 15 to 14 lead at the time. So it was, uh, it was a very frustrating evening. They took a 22 14 lead. You score a touchdown with Driscoll, as we just saw late, and you have a chance to go for two and tie the game up. And this time, the one time where there is no penalty on the play is the one that you just happened not to make. Yeah, that's true. You know, we ended up going for three of them. We got two out of the three. Unfortunately, two of them got called back. So, um, you know, I think two point conversion attempts are usually you're at about 50% um, if you're pretty good. Uh, we were at 67% the other night. Of course, we didn't get credit for two of them. Uh, it was unfortunate. And then the one that ended up um, at the end of the game, you know, we, we couldn't get it across. So You have about 40 seconds left. When you get the ball back down to able to drive to about <coughs> midfield, and that's where it seemed to stall at the end of the game, just ran out of time. But overall, impressed with Curtis's ability to lead his team in that situation? Yeah, I thought in the two-minute drill that we were very effective. Um, I thought we did a good job of throwing for first downs, getting out of bounds, managing the clock well. We got the ball out to about the 50. There were seven seconds to play. Uh, felt like that, you know, we had no timeouts. So, uh, you know, we were in a situation where, you know, is that one play or is that two plays? You know, and when you're having to throw for um, at least a 12-yard gain, um, you know, it's kind of one of those things that you got to go try to take a shot at the end zone, you know, I think. So, you know, unfortunately, we ended up getting sacked on that last play. But, you know, we just ran out of time. I thought we managed that position well. We just didn't have, didn't have enough seconds. We weren't, we weren't as fortunate as Alabama against LSU the other night. No, so. not as fortunate <laughs> as they were. It was an incredible game, by it the way, was. that game. Fate just wasn't with your team in this game, not only with the calls, but the fact that Plano East, who has struggled without their quarterback Mario Smalls being hurt, he comes back, just happens to be the week that you play Plano East, and, mm -hmm. and puts on a good performance. Oh, I thought he played, played well. He's, uh, he's very, very good. You know, he throws the ball extremely well. Um, I, I felt like all week long that he would, he would play. Of course, I, I didn't know for sure, but I felt like that he would, he would come back and play, and I was okay with that. You know, I, I think that... Um, you know, we unfortunately didn't play well enough to win the football game. We were close, but we weren't right. We weren't there. And, um, you know, the turnovers hurt us. Uh, the unfortunate calls obviously hurt us. But that was a game that, that we were very capable of winning with, you know, even with them having Smalls, and we just didn't get it done. Plano East remains undefeated with Smalls as their quarterback. But now putting that game aside, you have one game left in the regular season. You still, with a win, control your own destiny, can clinch the playoff. And it's against the rivals, McKinney High. You, you know their team very well. You've probably seen a lot of their players, you know, around town growing up in the camps and stuff like that. Yeah, what a big football game for the city of McKinney, huh? I mean, for it to be week 10, playoff spots on the line. You've got two schools uh, from, the, from the same town battling that thing out. I mean, I can't imagine that there wouldn't be everybody in the city of McKinney wanting to to get a ticket into Ron Pohl Stadium Friday night for this one because, uh, I mean, it's about as exciting as you get. I mean, there's, it's not just rivalry. It's not for bragging rights. I mean, this is for playoff spots. You know, it's, it's high knowing that if they beat us, they got a chance to get in. It's us knowing we beat them, we're in the playoffs. So, you know, what a huge night and what a great night for football in this town. The Lions have had an incredible season. After going 0-10 the previous year, they've already – secured five wins this year, have a chance to make it six if they can beat your team. They have a good offense. They have put up some stats this year. Robert Somborn at quarterback has several receivers, and Tommy Candela is back, the running back, now a couple of weeks from injury. He's an added threat that you have to worry about. Yeah, they're very, very uh, athletic in the skill positions. You know, Somborn, been watching him play now for three years. He does a great job at the quarterback position. Uh, you know, you take... Uh, the Fuentes kid, you take Red Shannon, 
you take Ken Dalla, the running back. I mean, you take TV Williams. I mean, there's a whole lot of speed on the field for them offensively. So, you know, we'll have our hands full in terms of trying to contain their offense. In the back of your mind, are you kind of smiling in the fact that you know last week they gave up 450 yards on the ground against Allen, and you know you have your offensive line and Brian Driscoll ready to go? Well, we, we need to play well. I mean, there's no doubt, you know. Um, of course, I'll say this. I mean, Plano East had given up quite a bit before we got there last week, too. So, um, McKinney High will be charged up. They'll be, they'll be eager to play. Um, so, I, I know it'll be a battle. And, and we will have to be prepared ourselves to, to come out and play our best football. Uh, I feel good about our kids. I feel good about where we're at. And I feel like they'll respond uh, this week and go play well. Now, of course, you could still make the playoffs with a loss. Don't even want to think about that. No, not really. You, you come off a five-game winning streak and now have lost two in a row. How much would a win Friday night, the big one against McKinney, do for your program moving into the playoffs, possibly? Well, I mean, it's kind of like this. If we don't win, we may not get in. So we don't even talk with the kids about the option of losing. I mean, in our mind, you've got to win the game. Um, so, you know, what does it do for us? Well, it gets us in the playoffs. Um, you know, the last time we lost two in a row, we rattled off five in a row. So, um, you know, we need to win Friday night to, to get us in and to get the momentum and, and, and hopefully get these guys uh, headed into the playoffs. It all comes down to one game. Can the McKinney Broncos get it done Friday night in the big game against McKinney High? One thing's for sure, get there early at Ron Post Stadium because those seats are going to be filled in a hurry. We want to thank all three head football coaches for being on the show today. A quick reminder that you can see all three McKinney ISD football teams at Ron Post Stadium this week. McKinney North welcomes Denison on Thursday night, followed by the highly anticipated crosstown rivalry game between Boyd and McKinney High on Friday. Boyd will clinch a playoff spot with a win over the Lions. However, if McKinney wins, then both teams' playoff fate will be determined by district tiebreakers. Remember to tune in next week to Sports Talk for the season recap for all three football programs and hopefully a playoff preview or two. From all of us here at Sports Talk, I'm Tyler Sloan. Have a great week.